It's already live, ah. Uh. Okay. It's live. Oh, 
All right, guys, welcome to the quarterfinals, no, semi finals of the novice category. Congratulations to all the winners this year. We have TKT8. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to invite Wade what's the motion. Good, good. Uh, this house will permanently lead the sanctions on the Syrian government if they can see it to be penalized. Okay, cool. On that motion, I'd like to invite the Prime Minister. Um, a few months ago, 
But they posted a video of all these people, of all these Catholics, uh, Muslim Catholics, being beheaded. Why is I think this proves how 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 this pro this problem should be uh, should be solved by the government um, in the nearest time. And who will lead this session? The United Nations itself will actually acknowledge that oh, the Syrian government has actually come to uh, come to the come to this. Um, uh, come to this, um, come to this uh, solution, and we feel that it's time for them to, it's time for us to actually the sanction. And our burden of rule is to actually uh, significantly weaken the ISIS and the benefits of actually proposing this motion in the first place, which will move on to my first incentive, which is a form of incentive. As you all know, the Syrian government is in dire need. To get the sanctions lifted, why? Because they are actually in an unstable economical state, which I said earlier, because they are in a supply of so many necessities. And to actually, uh, this is to actually significantly weaken the ISIS, which I'll explain later, and to improve the country's economic status. My, my first level of analysis is with this, which to push the government to actually work hard uh, to solve this problem. That this incentive can actually prove that they care for the welfare of the country, that they actually care on what's happening, and that they acknowledge that this ISIS is coming from their country and it's their goal to solve this problem, which goes to my next analysis, which is the role of government. Having to say that this the Syrian government acknowledges ISIS is from Syria itself, and they're actually jeopardizing journalists from other countries. That is something that will tarnish the image of Syria itself. And this, and the problem is, the government acknowledges this, but has taken no actually legal action on this, um, on this ISIS, which proves to you that how, how this, how dying, how this sentence is very crucial in making sure that this ISIS is, uh, is tarnished from the first place. One of my next analysis, which is the significance of aftermath when we can, when they weaken ISIS in the first place. Is it an aftermath? When they actually weaken this ISIS, the Syrian government is desirely protecting the world and the Syrian, the Syrian civil itself. Why do I say the world? Because as you can see that this ISIS don't just jeopardize the Syrian people, but actually in national in actually and other civilians from other countries. For example, a journalist from Japan itself who got uh, who got killed by the ISIS and actually people from and people from other religion who they actually um, kill just to show that this is what jihadism is all about. And second, uh, and to preserve the name of Islam. We can see why do I say that to preserve the name of Islam is one of the significant aftermath of when they simply weaken ISIS is because when this ISIS, this when this terrorist from ISIS actually itself a Muslim, we can see that this is a very bad, this is a very bad impact on the Muslims and on the name of Islam itself. So when a Syrian country, a Muslim country, let me stress on, a Muslim country, Syria, when actually they solve this problem in the first place, we can see that this will actually clean up the name of Islam. When a Muslim country itself actually is against the idea of jihadism, from ISIS, do you believe it's all about getting violence um, in the first place? So, having done, so having the incentive to push Syria has um, is only for the benefit of Syria, like I said earlier, to protect the world, to preserve the name of Islam, and to push the government to work harder. So, as we as we have said earlier, now main goal is to simply uh, mitigate the progress of ISIS and also the benefits when offenders and police make a stop for this. I just think with that, we will uh, take a post in the Alright, I think Prime Minister for speaking. Uh, not over the case for the opposition, I can invite the leader of Kenya. <laughs>
ISIS, ladies and gentlemen. We need to acknowledge ISIS as one thing. They are currently being adopted, not being adopted. They are currently supported by other Muslim countries. They are currently worth 2.1 billion as they have done a lot of things. <coughs> they have done a lot of things such as asking ransom, kidnapping, selling oil from the, uh, from the oil field that they control. We need to announce ISIS and someone who can, con who can survive on their own, even being isolated by the country. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I, uh, before that, so, um, very good, very good uh, evening to all. Now, first of all, uh, I'm going to state my stance, I'm going to state my word of proof, and then I'm going to characterize to this debate. Um, um, but before I've done all of this three, I'm going to rebut whatever comes from the government point. Now, first of all, let me rebut the government point. The government, point has, uh, the government has said they're going to create a regulated body to monitor ISIS. But how do they want to choose these people that are going to, to uh, monitor ISIS? ISIS? They have never justified to us who are going to be picked, and they haven't justified to us how are they going to lift the sanctions because these sanctions are being applied by the United, uh, by United Nations. The, um, and the sanction is being made by different countries. And how are they going to lift the sanctions? Now, they have said that by lifting this country, um, they, um, they're going to lift the sanction after they've shown that they actually care. But we believe that by lifting the sanctions, ladies and gentlemen, that this government will, uh, will, be, uh, will, become, will become worse. That's why I'm going to, uh, that's why I'm going to, I'm going to talk to you later. Now, <clears throat> they, uh, they say that they, by when the Syrian government is um, going to significantly look at ISIS, um, we're going to state the fact that it's, uh, it's going to be Islam country versus Islam jihadist. Basically. Islam jihadist is basically an idea where when they, when they die in that war, they will die and go to heaven. While Islam country, they are just a country. And if they kill, uh, if this Islam country kill an Islam jihadist, they're going to say, oh, you just kill the jihadist. You are bad because you are um, stopping uh, the, um, these jihadists uh, to obtain our freedom. Uh, before I move on, yes. Sir, I got this jihadism. It's beautiful way to be wrong because the idea of jihadism does not contain the element of violence. We tell people already acknowledge the fact that I said you said the, the wrong interpretation of jihadism to begin with. Okay, we understand what you're going to say. But you need to understand that different people have different perspectives. The government sees this as something different, but the society is in this as something different. Well, the society see ISIS as a jihadist. That's where they can, uh, or they're, just, um, they're supported. Now, let's move on to, uh, um, to our bit of proof. We believe that the Syrian government is unable to handle, to handle ISIS in this current uh, status. Now, we believe that by lifting the sanctions, the, uh, the Syrian government will become, uh, will become worse. Now, let me give you this uh, characterization on uh, this bit. Now, Syrian government, uh, in Syrian country itself, Syria, Syrian Christians are being kidnapped by ISIS. They are being kidnapped inside Syria, ladies and gentlemen. Then, how are the Syrian government going to weaken them while they themselves can stop ISIS from entering their country? <coughs> uh, and while they themselves are being attacked by ISIS in significant number, and their society, their people, are being threatened by ISIS day by day, and they haven't shown to us how uh, how Syria are going to significantly weaken ISIS. They haven't shown to us uh, the way to, uh, to weaken them. Now, in the past, Syrian government, uh, you, uh, you need to understand that the Syrian government is an enclosed government. They do not care about uh, they do not care the opinion of other country. They will uh, they believe what they do is right, and what other people think about that has nothing to do with them. Now, in the past, Syrian government have committed several actions that compromise the activity of international people trying to help their country, trying to help other countries. And because of this, we believe that by lifting these sanctions with this gentlemen, Syrian government will recontinue as a uh, fact right now uh, in the status quo. Um, there are several arrests on Syrian, uh, on Syrian politicians, the one that sits in the government being arrested for, make, uh, for making secret meetings with, with ISIS as uh, ISIS leader, giving them support, um, saying, say, giving them loopholes in their defense. And with this, we believe by lifting this sanction, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, Syrian government will become worse and this
country. <coughs> no. Now, we believe that Syria is not uh, reliable because as what I tell you, um, as what as the past, the, their past action has shown to the world. Now, I'm going to go to my government. First, the feasibility of the sanction, ladies and gentlemen. Why are we going to continue the uh, sanctioning Syrian government? We believe that by continuing to uh, give sanction to the Syrian government, you know, Syrian government, they will change. They will change internally, and they can continue to spread this attack. Let me finish my point. Sit down. Now, as right now, uh, from the entire time that the world has imp uh, imposed sanctions to the Syrian government, several political figures inside the government have started to change their mind. They say, if I continue to become like my past, I will, um, um, the society will never get better. So I need to give a better, uh, a better country to the society so that they could live in peacefully. Now with this, they have also influenced, these sanctions also have influenced the pol uh, political leader of, um, and they have convinced people that the Syrian government is going to change and they are starting to change. And if, uh, if we suddenly lift the, san lift the sanctions, they will become worse as they will take uh, the Syrian government will take advantage of lifting of the sanctions to, to misuse the power, to, let, uh, to continue letting ISIS enter the country. Now, sanctions are like a parole. When the harm is given, they will start to change. Um, it will give the government a self-actualization to behave themselves, to, to become different. If you're going to continue with the government model, it's not going to happen. And because ISIS is currently attacking Syria, and the Syrian government is helpless against ISIS. And the people itself, the society of the Syrian, uh, the, uh, the Syria, is pressured, uh, is giving pressure to the government. And they are pushing the government, and, the, and the, when the pressure is created, we believe this pressure is for the betterment of the government, as the government has to change to public leaders, messages, and also it will become an act of cowardice if we lift, uh, if we lift the sanction, and and will not create, uh, will not create any space for this Syrian government to come worse. And that I very much Understand the case coming from the opposition side. They're assuming that we're going to lift the sanctions without putting any requirements. But the motion clearly stated that we're only going to lift, permanently lift the sanctions if they fulfill the requirement, which means that they will actually show how they will significantly weaken IS to begin with. Mr. Speaker. Therefore, we think that the whole argument where, uh, where they question to us on the feasibility does it exist, Mr. Speaker. But regardless, let's go through the, the case coming from the opposition side. They talk about how they, they give the analogy of how ISIS is actually supported by Muslim countries. We tell you that that is false to begin with. Why? Right now, the whole world is actually against the whole idea of ISIS to begin with. Why? Because the ISIS themselves are showing their own flaw by propagating the idea of violence and the whole idea of jihadism to begin with. We tell you that right now, there are already bodies or also social medias propagating the idea of the real idea of jihadism and also what is exactly or pinpointing why is the flaw of ISIS to begin with, Mr. Speaker. Therefore, we tell you there's no such thing as a whole kind of Muslim country supporting ISIS to begin with, Mr. Speaker. And also, so they come to us on the idea of how this ISIS and uh, ISIS can stand by their own, even with sanctions, Mr. Speaker. We're quite confused because at the end of the last speech, they talked about how the sanctions becoming a pressure. And at the end, but at the beginning of the speech, they said that they can still set up within the pressure. We tell you that we need a clarification on what exactly is understanding on the sanctions to begin with. Also, we did question to us on who exactly is going to regulate or monitor the requirements, right? We already told you on how this regulate like 
liability body, body will come from United Nations because the sanction initially comes from the United Nations, right, Mr. Speaker. Also, they talk about how the idea of the confused society, where they don't get the idea of Islam jihadism and also the real idea of jihad, jihadists. So we get focused down. The first confusion that kept coming from the opposition side is that they don't understand that ISIS and Syria are two different things. The fact that Syria is a government and ISIS is a body, is a state, is an Islamic state, where they promote the idea of Islam, which uh, but it, but is in fact is uh, have a lot of flaws and also also false portrayals portrayals that's already been acknowledged by the society, right, Mr. Speaker. But regardless, I will I will explain to you on what exactly is the problem coming from the opposition side. They talk about how. Um, they talk about how the, uh, when you actually lift the sanctions, they will assume that more secret meetings will happen and they talk about how the politicians will actually be corrupt or so. Firstly, we already told you on how the idea of corruption will not happen because firstly, we already proved to you on how the Assyria state, in order for them to lift the sanctions, permanently lift the sanctions, they have to prove to the government on how exactly uh, the ISIS can actually significantly, can, can significantly weaken ISIS to begin with. We tell you that the fact that right now, Syria has the capability to weaken ISIS. It shows how Syria is assured not to actually turn back into the world to begin with. But even if so, we already also tell you on the idea of, of, uh, of, uh, of there's no direct investment to begin with. Because right now, the countries already know that if ISIS actually turns back into the UN, therefore it shows how Syria themselves are the bad party, right? So therefore, the direct investment will not happen because right now the countries already know, already know the fact that right now they're actually supporting ISIS and they also acknowledge the fact that ISIS is the bad party. Right? Um, and also they talked about, uh, um, yeah, wait for that. Can you clarify for us how you measure the, the weak, how ISIS is weak in the first place? Do you want to clarify how the or how clarify All right, but already told you on how the requirement on how significantly Weakened ISIS plays a very important role in today's debate because if we need that the idea of them having to monitor this, uh, this, the, the level of weakness of this ISIS comes when the violent cases are significantly decreased. We also tell you on how we want to monitor on the progress of this ISIS when we believe that if the, the progress of ISIS has stopped to a certain extent, where well, it will not cause any influence on other countries or will not cause any detrimental harm on any countries, we think that that is the definition of how you exactly weaken. The, uh, uh, the uh, weaken ISIS to begin with, Mr. Speaker. And also, we will tell you on how, in our video of today, we will tell you on how will the ISIS have a stronger incentive to actually work to an idea of how they need to weaken the ISIS to begin with, having to concede the fact that ISIS themselves come from Syria, Mr. Speaker. Also, the, also my first story talk about on how our mechanism we will have a monetary body to monitor this thing, and we also tell you that this, in order for the sanction, sanctions to be lifted, we need they as Syria um Syria needs to fulfill the requirement on how significantly bad uh the, how they actually significantly weaken as this figure. Also going to a very sub first sub sub first substantive under the uh, uh, first substantives coming from the government side, right? The harms will actually happen and in that paradigm, is that the detrimental effect on the economical status and also society will never be improved. Why? Right now they put they can see to the fact that this sanction is a form of pressure. But they're not putting any incentive or any ways to actually tell them that if you can actually prove to us or to weaken the ISIS, therefore we will eventually lift your sanction. Because we're telling them that we have the sanction as already been characterized by my first speaker on how the sanction means that there will be a lacking of supply to the country. Therefore, the society, the society will not be able to get uh, the, the, the welfare that's supposed to be provided by the, the, that particular government as a government of people. And also, we tell you that the idea of business will not be able to occur because the idea of you having a business is for you to create an international, international relation with other countries. The fact that this sanction uh, puts a limit onto or to uh, put the limit where the other countries cannot in, cannot come to your country or give supply or exchange a lot of uh, business benefits will tell you that that that, uh, that will actually affect uh, Syria even more. So going to the fact that they do they won't have any development in the economical state, right, Mr. Speaker? We tell you this will actually create a lot of societal repercussion to begin with because now, firstly, the fact that in Syria they already have societal repercussion on the problems or on the damage, like for instance, um, the fact that now society is putting a bad image on Syria because right now they think that what, what is wrong with Syria or ISIS, which which comes from, from Syria, to the extent where they want to harm the people of other countries. We tell you that those are the kind of societal perception 
that will not be able to change until they are carried out because they won't be providing any incentives to do so at this level. Also, also the, the other repercussion that will happen is that society will start to, to, to question on wh whether or not Syria is taking any affirmative action to change uh, or to improve the problem. Because we tell you that the main cause, people will start to question on the main cause of Syria, uh, on the main cause of ISIS or Syria to begin with. They've Oh, they think that the, they believe that the main the main party that should intervene or should take affirmative action in order to improve uh, the state uh, improve the situation is the state themselves. We tell you that at the end of the day, situations will eventually improve, and the outside and the go the, and the opposite side will stay dismissive because they, because they don't have any sort so, uh, some sort of incentive to push the idea of having sanctions to begin with. Mr. Speaker, if you believe in the, if you believe in the idea of having to significantly weaken ISIS, go beside government. Thank you. Yeah. The conflict that has, has, has been happening in the Middle East, uh, I mean, a big crisis, as most people know, that because in the Middle East, in the, the Middle East country are having a lot of crises, right? The, they are not satisfied with the government or they are being attacked by any source of terrorism. Now, before that, a very good evening to everyone who is present in this room. So, for, for today, I'm going, first of all, I'm going to rebut what the side government has stated. Secondly, I am going to give out my stance and my burden of proof and today I'm going to give out my arguments uh, my arguments and my points of this debate. First of all, the government stated that they're going to push the government to the, the side the government has stated they're going to push the government to work hard to counter this problem. But they didn't clarify how are they going to put to to work hard on to to, to the government have to push to be working hard on on, on this on on this problem they didn't say how does the government are going to come to this problem how does this government how does this government are going to solve this problem that's happening or uh, that is happening in this country secondly they also said that the society are going starting to question the Syrian government why they didn't counter the problem that are happening first of all ladies and gentlemen most of society in the Syria itself are supporting the idea of jihadism because they believe that if they are doing this, uh, they are if they actually commit this kind of jihadism, they could, you know, go to heaven, go to heaven, it will ease them in, in their in their afterlife. But that is why the Muslim uh, the Muslim religion has been uh, has been teaching them. See, ladies and gentlemen. The Syria are not going to be taking action against this, uh, against this because if because of the sanction that, that is happening. So, Mr. Speaker, yes. Mr. Speaker, they they also stated that the, the idea of business and they are not very clear of the, the idea of business that of, of the Syria itself as the ISIS are receiving power from the Al Qaeda. So if they even if they permanently leave the sanction. They will still receive uh, um, a support and power from the Al Qaeda or from the from the other countries. So we believe that we shouldn't permanently uh, leave the sanction. So now moving on to the so now moving on to our uh, for our side stance and burden of So what we said is that we are allowing we. Are are not going to allow more misuse of power inside the government because we know that the government of Syria are corrupted. They are they are discriminating the people 
as we all know about the Sunni and Shia conflict. And see what happens in Sunni and Shia conflict is that the Sunni believe that what the, the, the Shia is portraying the bad side of Islam. And what the Shia believe is that the Sunni have a different belief with the Shia. They, the, the Shia believe that, oh, we should kill the uh, Sunni uh, community because they have a different belief and we should kill them. So that is what is happening right now at this second, at this hour. So what we wanted to prove that is that the Shia government will unable to handle ISIS even if they permanently lift the sanction. Why? Because ISIS will take Syria as a threat because, you, because imagine if one, if this time, your friends are supporting you for doing for for your studies and all, and suddenly yes. your friends are like backstabbing. So what do you think? They will, you will, uh, they will, the the Syria that will threaten the Syria and the corruption is going to happen more down. And now moving on to my points, which are um which are which are the backlash towards the Syrian government. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, the Sunni and Shia and ISIS all stands for Islam. They are saying that Islam is, they are trying to say that Islam is a good religion. But no, whatever that they are doing right now, they are saying that, they are showing that uh, to the other countries, to other religions, to other society, saying that Islam is a, a source of terrorism. So they are saying that Sunni, Shia, Sunni and Shia and ISIS are actually showing the bad side of Islam. They are killing each other and ISIS is also killing people and are threatening to to attack US and so it is really showing some more bad side of Islam and what I'm trying to say here is that if the Syrian government still wanted to support ISIS there will be a conflict between the society, the people, the citizens and also the government. How? How does there will be a conflict? But there will going to be a mass, mass, mass uh, killing as people, the citizens are going to going to lose trust towards the government because they will start to question. Look, they are look. The ISIS uh, is a terrorist organization, and the gov and our government are still going to support them. Why? Because they will start to question like. Hey, they, they might go in to attack us. So why are we still supporting them? Why are we still giving funds to them? Why are we still giving money to them? And why are we supporting the idea of ISIS itself? Alright, moving on. Alright, moving on. So what the leader of the uh, stated is that the sanction that is going to happen is a parole and it will bring it will not bring any, it will bring detrimental harm as the West is not there yet. See, the society is not aware of what is going to happen to towards, towards, towards the country. Because right now, at this time, at this moment, the society itself are losing trust towards the government. They don't believe that the government are going to bring them to a brighter future. They, are, what they believe is that the government are going to bring them to corrupt, towards corruption. So if this, the government are still supporting ISIS, then how are how are they how are the government going to collect back the trust take back the trust that the society has losing for them? So so what I have told you today is that they are going to be a backlash to the Syrian government as the citizens are going to lose trust and also I stated our stance which is not not to allow more misuse of power that to allow not to allow more misuse of power inside the government. And we also want to prove that the Syrian government will be unable to handle ISIS. Therefore, I am very proud of your post. Thank you.
So we can really see the debate that the opposition side has clearly misunderstood the definition of the uh, difference between ISIS and Syria. They have been, been telling us about how ISIS can survive on their own and such things, but definitely I understand that we are, that we are actually trying to have, uh, we are actually trying to incentivize the Syria government to actually uh, the, the ISIS itself. Now, so as government wait for today, I would first like to give up my battle. So you can also sit up clash in today's debate and then we clarify the whole case for today. Now, more my uh, clarify battles. Firstly, we don't that people in Syria support jihadism. We know that no, we repeatedly stated, my second speaker, Harry Batu, and uh, I told you that the people deciding on this clearly understand that what I is putting is not jihadism, it is something violent. The, the society has clearly understood that already, but you, but you, but apparently you have a case to that fact. Secondly, you told us that Al Qaeda is helping, that is helping ISIS. We know that if that is not permitted into this debate, because that is that what we are trying to do today is to actually, uh, is to actually uh, uh, help the Syrian government to actually stop the ISIS. So what the ISIS is doing does not matter because we are we are now going to have, going to ensure that the Syrian government is doing something to actually stop ISIS. Thirdly, so the problem is that, uh, that your, your problem with this debate is that Syria is supporting ISIS and that when that happens, it's tied with this trust in the government. And then so, how can the government actually gain, uh, how, can the, uh, how can the government actually do this when society does not have trust in them? But we tell you here that no, we've already told you that the main point of the debate today is that we want, uh, we want everyone to see that we are not propagating Syria to help ISIS. We are telling you today that we are we are actually more supporting Syria to actually go even more against ISIS. We can also tell you that there is no way the society will lose trust in the uh, in, in the Syria government if they if they if they actually if the Syria government actually prove that they can do something to weaken ISIS and on regain the trust of the society. I'm going to my scratch into this debate, which is the impacts uh, impacts of this motion towards the government. The second that opposition side, we told us that it will then make politicians and secret meetings that it will make uh, it will make them even stronger if it is lifted. We tell you that no, it will make uh, it tell that no that when it, when we actually um, make propose this motion, it will it will actually into the center for them more because when this when these sections are lifted, it will then get more supplies for the country. This is what Syria needs for the, for the, for the society of the country. And we tell that this will actually incentivize them to actually do something. Because in this right now, this, uh, when they have a session, there's nothing that they can do. And we're providing this, we're providing the option that if only they would do something to, uh, to actually weaken the ICs, they will get all the fights back. They can, already, they can actually provide back the, to the society. This is how, this is how, they actually, uh, this is how you actually get, uh, get something uh, have something to actually support, uh, to actually have a reason to actually be paid uh, assistively. Also, they have told you that it will make them even worse. It will make the government, uh, it will make the Syrian government and the situation in Syria even worse. And that if uh, that if the sanction is to be continued, that it will actually improve. That uh, it will naturally change. Uh, we have two responses for this. Firstly, is that we haven't actually stated how are going to ensure that they, they will naturally improve. Because in that is cool, that is what's happening right now. But there is nothing to ensure. Uh, but, uh, but there is no assurance that it will uh, it will naturally improve. Uh, also, um, also, also, told you about how. Yes, sir. Society. So the problem right now is that they, they are uh, probably uh, slowly starting to change, but the change has not brought a significant change to the, to the current situation right now. We tell you that, uh, this, that, that uh, even though you believe that this British share that some of the people in this country are changing right now, we tell you that there has not brought any, any, any sort of change that, uh, that is possibly really we can, uh, we can ISIS in the status quo nowadays. So, uh, we also tell you that we are uh, that uh, by, our, uh, by proposing our motion today, that when we actually have something to incentivize that, it will actually lead to more, to more effort to actually decreasing, uh, to actually, uh, to actually weaken uh, uh, ISIS significantly. Also, uh, now moving on to the clarification of the whole case for today. Firstly, my first uh, speaker told you about the problem statement, about how uh, is the main reason why we should all, uh, is, uh, why the Syrian government should help, yeah, should help in specifically weakening the, the ISIS itself. And also, share uh, for you about how our burden of proof is to significantly weaken the ISIS, about how we would like to talk about the benefits that will come from proposing this motion. We also tell you that, we have, uh, that, this, uh, that this is quite important because we are trying to provide a form of incentive for the, for the Syrian government to actually do something because then 
we can uh, that because then they can actually get help for the country. They can actually get cost um or get sufficient uh, supply for the for the society. Because if absolutely uh, then we they uh, they get the the, the trust of the society. Uh, 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 my second speaker also, also told you about how by uh, that how by how this can actually help is uh, in solving the current harms that ISIS is bringing, which is how when the, when ISIS is uh, currently progressing even more, the Syrian government is going to be affected even more. And we believe that the Syrian government uh, should, uh, should do something about it because ISIS, is, uh, ISIS comes through Syria and is based in Syria. We tell you that when this, uh, that this is taken into, uh, into uh, uh, record, we tell you that when this is uh, actually uh, English, we tell you that this is why Syria should be the, uh, should be the country that, that needs to actually start to stop on what ISIS is doing, that, uh, that, uh, that should at least significantly weaken ISIS. But we not right now. We need something to stop them from progressing, from influencing other countries and people. We tell that we tell that what we are trying to do right now is actually do make something, make a better change for the country itself. Because we believe that the society needs uh, needs enough uh, needs more supply. We believe that it's not fair for Syria that the society itself is get, uh, is getting affected by all this simply because of the, because of the ISIS uh, case that is happening right now. And with that, I as the government and the government side, hold on, you put this motion. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, let me clarify to you one thing: that when you lift a sanction upon a country that has committed a lot of misuse of power before they even were given the sanctions in the first place, like how they misused this power uh, in corrupting the Al Qaeda, uh, Al Qaeda operations, that we think that it's good. after you implement this policy that is presented by the government, it will allow more misuse of power and it will repeat. The history that has been uh, that has occurred before this. But before that, good morning and good evening, I mean, to everyone who's present here today in this week. I am the whip speaker from the opposition. But first, clarify to you um, three issues that are uh, arise in this week, and I uh, reiterate uh, why the the opposition would take the the way forward to this week. Okay, first of all, the issue that I had with government says was that they did not explain. How they measured, uh, how they measured to weaken ISIS in technically, and they did not have a yardstick on how they want to determine which type of goal that they should achieve. In uh, they did not specify what the uh, what the Syrian government should do to actually uh, to actually redeem that trust and be lifted of their sanctions, ladies and gentlemen. So we think that that's the weakness of the government side that they give that that there was a lack of clarification, clarification and blurred the case in the first place. So now, and secondly, even if uh, even if now that they explain that the UN the UN can uh, simply say uh, can simply state which one uh, which one of the goals that they should achieve, we believe that the abuse of dictatorship will happen because of the UN the UN can simply say, oh, we're not satisfied. You you should do more. You should do more, and you should do more. So because they did not specify what type of goals, and they didn't they did not they did not uh, list down on what. Maybe they should uh, cut down half of the workforce or certain things like that. So the UN can simply take advantage upon the, the Syrian government 
so we do not want this mis in this dictatorship to happen. Second, we, uh, about the clash between willingly and incentive uh, for the betterment of government. The government, uh, the government stated that uh, the sanction will somehow give an incentive, and the Syrian government will be happy, so they would work towards uh, stop, uh, stopping ISIS. Right. So first of all. The integrity of the Syrian government has already been compromised before this. People do not believe in this enclosed country because they do not they do not follow what uh, other countries advise upon them. Just like how uh, just like how when the U.S. Uh, when the U.S. and between Al Qaeda, uh, U.S. Syria and Al Qaeda operations happen, and they, they already compromised that operation. So how can you give? How can you simply uh, state that oh you're going to be lift up a little of the sanction just because you help us weaken ISIS? Not Taking down, taking them down completely. So the visibility of okay. their mechanism is not that. But before that, yes. You already said the requirement on how significant it is for you to break it. I said because yeah, the I of you putting a stop. Me, you say you already put military bodies to measure it. Already answer the question. Okay, even if they significantly weaken the ISIS itself, we do not think that first the Syrian government will actually uh, successfully weaken this because of several reasons I will explain later in the clash. Second, uh, on the second level, of what happens after the sanction? Will they still be a country that is eligible and will be reputable in this agreement? So all of that is in my clash, but uh, let me explain, continue. Okay. Um, First of all, you give freedom to a corrupted government. You give freedom to a government that half supports ISIS and half supports the uh, and half supports justice, ladies and gentlemen. So there is no stability in the uh, in the uh, there's no stability in the system itself. So how can you uh, actually think of an, uh, how can you actually expect the effectiveness to be there to be present in uh, uh, in Continuing this type of operations, especially as especially when even the Syrian government itself cannot control the current situation, uh, the current situation where Syrian their uh, their citizens themselves are being kidnapped, being killed, ladies and gentlemen, like how uh, the Syrian uh, Christians are uh, are facing right now. So we think that the Syrian, the Syrian government does not have enough power to overcome these type of problems when uh, even even if they provide more incentives, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, moving on the. Moving on about the uh, the conflicts between society and the government, ladies and gentlemen, let us think. The Islamic State, ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's Islam. Even the name itself brings the name of Islam, brings this, actually brings a big influence. Why? Because the followers will think, uh, certain people will think, oh, just because the name is Islam, uh, I, I think that I should support this. This is the stigma that is present in the Muslim uh, society today. So we cannot, uh, because that's it. This has stated that all uh, everyone goes against terrorism. Everyone uh, think, uh, is rational enough to think that it's wrong. Yes, we can see that, that there are certain parts of the society actually believe that. But we think that when the community, uh, these types of communities, especially in the Middle East, they support jihadism. And obviously, when they support jihadism, they certain of them will think that oh, so I can support Islamic State. So uh, when 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 the government knows. That their community, their community, community like Sunni and Shias in the Syrian government are already present and they support this type of ideas. Don't you think that uh, when the government actually lets out a public statement, sorry, sit down, when, uh, uh, when the government actually lets public statement that we're going to support to weaken this type of, uh, we're going to weaken your uh, ideas, your, uh, the group of terrorists that you've been supporting before this, don't you think that the society that will always, obviously go against the government will. Uh, now that uh, we know that Sunnis and Shias are already fighting in the government, you add the burden upon the Syrian government, saying that okay, now you have to deal with the people who don't agree what, with what you're doing. So we think that it's going to the backlash is going to happen there. So you can see, the, so we can see to the fact that um, people, uh, sorry, the societal perception, uh, uh, societal perception against uh, against the Gulf happens under their mechanism more rather than our mechanism, ladies and gentlemen. Moving on to the uh, second issue about the feasibility of the policy, they wanted to leave the uh, sanction because they say that um that uh, it will give incentive and after after the Syrian government received this, then they will be happy, so they would be happy to weaken the ISIS itself. So what happens after they actually weaken ISIS, even if they weaken ISIS successfully somehow? After they leave, a lot of abuse of power will happen because now you're allowing a country that has committed a lot of, uh, that has misused their power of not being sanctioned and has uh, misused their power of their uh, relations, ladies and gentlemen. We think that you would repeat the uh, history.
say that they did it before. So now I will see, I will see why our uh, opposition side is doing it. We prove to you how Syria, how Syria is not the country that you can actually rely on. How, how even the even the UN themselves, they would not actually totally agree because the US has already had problems with Syria. So we do not think that this uh, mechanism is actually feasible. So we think opposition side is way. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the debate, Abhinav, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to the Vice Now, <coughs> now uh, I, as a, uh, as a government, uh, as the opposition, is presenting you as a Vice Minister. I'm going to answer several, uh, I'm going to answer several questions in this debate. Now, let me say, uh, let me state to you um, about Syria, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Syria is a stubborn government. They are a closed government. <laughs> they are enclosed government. They do not care about what other people think. They do not care what the UN thinks about them. They do not care about the sanctions they give them. But due to the sanctions, the harm is given to them. Uh, the harm is given to them. They are, great, they are trying to make better so that the society could live in a better nation. The society could live in a better environment. And because of that, they are starting to change. And this has been proven because political figures are changing. The public leaders are convincing the, uh, the society that the government uh, are changing. And this, in, in a matter of years, uh, due to research, in a matter of years, this country will achieve a conducive environment, uh, conducive environment for our society. Now, let me go on to the ISIS. I've stated, to, uh, my speech just now has stated to you how ISIS is very strong, how they are being really funded by, uh, by the Gulf country, how they are being, how they could uh, stand on their own, even they are actually, uh, even they are isolated due to their activities. Now, we need to, uh, you need to acknowledge one thing about ISIS. They are strong. They are not strong in the numbers. They are strong because there are few people willing to do crazy things, ladies and gentlemen. So this crazy thing is like bribery. Uh, it's like bribery to the government. They say, hey, I'm going to enter your country. I'll give you this small, this small, this small. Yeah, uh, and this is literally proven. We have arrested several Syrian, uh, Syrian uh, political leaders just because they're making, uh, making uh, public, um, secret meetings with um, ISIS people. They're um, giving uh, their receiving bribery and and other ch charges. Now, le uh, let me show you who handle ISIS better. If we go with the government uh, model, they are pushing the government to handle this uh, this case. They are uh, setting st uh, standards to show uh, standards about um, they are putting uh, uh, they are putting a regulated bodies onto monitor ISIS to see how weak they are. But we believe that even if they are weakened. What happened to the Syrian government, ladies and gentlemen? Um, they, uh, they are saying they're going to incentivize the government um, to, uh, to get supplies, so they have enough power to attack ISIS. But we do not believe this, uh, this is significantly true. Why, ladies and gentlemen? Because ISIS is strong, um, ISIS is strong, and the Syrian government still has the Sunni Shia conflict inside the country, and they have uh, they have a lot of burden to be carried on throughout the debate. But if we go with our if we go with our mechanism of continuing the sanctions, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the government will change. Corruption won't happen again because why? Because the uh, political figures are changing. The public leaders are, uh, are telling the society relax. The government changing, and you need to support them. What happens when the society is supporting the government? Is, uh, um, they will, uh, if they, uh, they know ISIS around there, they could report. They, um, they could even defend themselves, and the government should take action, block the border, do not let ISIS enter the country anymore, and uh, further ISIS problem will not be there. And with that, ISIS is gone from Sudan forever. And you need to believe that for the, the feasibility of sanction that I have spoken and several points that have spoken uh, by uh, by outside and the government point, um, the government, uh, the government point of pushing down is not is unable to solve the problem of ISIS. With that, thank you.
thank you, opposition, for tonight to close the debate for everyone that could fight to govern the class team. can see to the fact that sanctions can actually change government. But look, let's look at it in a different perspective, right? Which side actually incentivizes people to actually change, to actually reach the end goal, which is to cater to ISIS to begin with. And before that, let us go through, uh, uh, let us go through the issues coming from both sides, right? Because they talk on how the societal perfection, the societal perception, and how this societal perception will just stay there and more, more repercussions will happen on the outside. Firstly, we'll tell you, we tell you when Syria is actually against the whole idea of ISIS to begin with. They are firstly pointing the fact that ISIS, ISIS is in fact propagating the wrong idea of jihadism to begin with. Secondly, we tell you that when they actually go against ISIS, it shows how it shows how they're not indirectly supporting ISIS to begin with. Because they have a problem with this Syria supporting ISIS. Yes, we can see to the fact that if Syria supports ISIS, there will be a lot of social repression happening. That is exactly what we're trying to propagate. The fact that we are now incentivizing, incentivizing Syria to go against ISIS sh shows how we actually are in fact against ISIS threat in the But also they talk about how the idea of visibility and all those not things. We tell you the idea of visibility to begin with does not exist. Why? Because they, we can't put the burden on the government side to prove on whether or not or to give out you to, to give up the methods on how exactly are you gonna cater to ISIS. Because our burden for today is that to prove to you on how this by incentivizing Syria to begin with, it will actually make uh, it will it can actually sig uh, significantly weaken ISIS and its people. And also the second idea of how misuse of government power will actually happen under our side. Firstly, they didn't even explicitly explain to us on what or how exactly this power, this use of uh, government power will happen under our paradigm. And, and we believe that the idea of this misuse of government power has been uh, has been elaborated more in the third speaker's speech. And we think that is unfair because we don't have any avenue to rebut to it, right? But regardless, we tell you they already have regulatory bodies to regulate these people to actually know that Syria has reached the certain requirements in order for them to lift the sanctions in order for United Nations to lift the sanctions. Because the only part that, the, the part that the, the opposition said didn't understand from the very, very beginning of the debate is why exactly we want to lift up the sanctions. We tell you that the main reason why we want to lift up the session is because Syria has already fulfilled the requirements whereby they have to significantly prove to us how they can actually significantly significantly weaken uh, ISIS to begin with the speaker. And also they talk about how this Islam has a bad side, so on and so forth. We already told you on how the idea of you punishing this bad side to begin with is for you to propagate the idea that Syria is in fact against uh, ISIS to begin with. Because they have a, uh, they have a confusion on whether um, on Syria and ISIS is the exact same thing. We tell you that no, ISIS is a, is a part of Syria, something that comes from Syria, but Syria itself is, is a government. Therefore, we think that, this, that Syria has a total right to go against ISIS, and there will, there's no such thing as the government being contradictory because you have exact reasons why you want to go ISIS to begin with, Speaker. And also, to the whole idea on how the idea of jih jihadism is going to, um, the, the idea of jihadism will be end of the day. Under our paradigm, we're going to be able to propagate to you the real idea of jihadism, but by Syria themselves are in fact against the whole idea of jihadism propagating by ISIS. Because the, the, the idea propagated by ISIS is that jihadism is in fact uh, inc includes a lot of violent elements, which is in fact, uh, which is not exactly the, the right idea of jihadism. Now also the last part is that what exactly, who will exactly benefit at the end of the day, right? Because under their side, they will not be able to remove the sanctions internally. Problems such as businesses not being able to, uh, to occur, therefore, uh, businesses not being able to occur, societies will still have the repercussions, society will have a shot of, uh, of welfare, will just stay stagnant. But under our paradigm, it will actually increase the effort of, the, of, this, uh, of Syria to actually improve the situation in Syria themselves. Also, under their paradigm, they're actually assuming that Syria will not have any means to actually improve their party, and we think that is a very bad move for uh, for a particular government to run speaker. And with that, the government takes it away. Thank you.